Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Colleen Styler Hunt and I'm going to take you through a tutorial for how to create quite a simple game. In fact, I'm going to call it like a holiday card um, in Unreal Engine version 5. This is designed for people who have never used Unreal before and you may never have even programmed before. The idea is this is a very first project you could do. So keep in mind that's beginner level. So if you're more advanced than this, you may not want to do this project. But let me show you what we're going to make. So if I hit the play button here, we've got some holiday music and we've got the instructions, find the scattered holiday decorations. So you click on each one that you see, puts it somewhere else in the scene. found so then it tells you that you've done it if you go next then there is the Christmas card components this is me and my husband and our some of our pets um, but you can create this however you like we've got some music playing in the background if I hit exit that will exit the game I'm going to go to credits so this has all been created with assets by other people so the lovely um, holiday music that you hear is created by Scott Holmes Music. Thank you for including that uh, as Creative Commons for us, Scott. And I've used some sound effects from the 3D platformer Air of Code project and also from JFXR sound effect generator app available at that link. And all the beautiful graphics that you see is from the Kenny Holiday Kit which you can download from kenny.nl. Uh, they produce some awesome assets. So these are all 3D assets that you're able to download for free. So let's get started now that you know that what we're going to make. And of course, you don't have to make, I've made this obviously for a Christmas card, but it could be any holiday, it could be birthday, you could make whatever you like. So I'm just going to hit the exit button there. All right, so how do we start? So in the notes for this video, I have provided a zip file for you. So I'm just going to close this and bring up my file explorer. All right, so you'll see a zip file called Christmas Cards Assets in place. You'll need to download that and there's a link in the notes below. But once you get that zip file, if you right click on it and go to extract to Christmas card assets in place 5.0 you've now got this folder if I double click on that and I double click on the .u project file it will ask if you want to rebuild and I'm going yes that will take a little while I will come back to you once it's actually loaded and here we go the lighting might be a bit dull to start with it'll take a little while for it to come up so this is the scene that you're going to start with now keep in mind that you could make this scene yourself so if you wanted to go and get the download these assets from Kenny you're welcome to you would just have to create this scene yourself if this is close to what you want but you'd like to move things around a little bit um, you can click on an asset and you'll see each asset has an entry in the world outliner in the outliner over here and uh, you'll see when you click on different ones you get different things you can also they're listed in alphabetical order you can also click on a particular one in here as another way of selecting them Let's say i want to move this tree these little, um, you'll use these, this little menu a lot. So at the moment we're on select and translate objects. Translate just means move. Then this is for selecting and rotating. And this one is for selecting and scaling. Let's start with this select and translate. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So to zoom in, you can just use your mouse wheel, middle mouse wheel, and roll it around. You'll see at the base of this tree, and I'm just going to go function and up arrow to move my view up a little bit. And you can also right click and um, to drag the viewport around if you want to change your point of view. You can also use the arrows to get closer. Now, hopefully you can see there, we've got this, uh, when I click on something, 
you put these little arrows. You put a blue arrow, a green arrow, and a red arrow. If you click on the blue arrow, it will translate or move the item up or down. Now I'm going to move it up. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo so I can put it back where I had it. But just say I wanted to move the, um, the tree a little bit that way. I'll grab the red arrow and move it that way or the green arrow to bring it towards me. I'll just undo it because I'm actually happy with the original position. But um, you can try and move them all every which way you like. However, it soon becomes a bit unwieldy when you're working in 3D space to do that. So typically when you move things, you'll move it by one axis at a time. And you just click and select that particular handle or arrow to move it in that way. And you'll see at the bottom of your screen, it tells you that we call the up and down axis Z. The one that at, the, at this point of view is coming towards me. The green one, we're calling that Y. And the other one, we're calling X. So um, that's just a bit of an overview. If you wanted to make anything bigger or smaller, you can use the scale tool here. Uh, if I zoom out, whoops, and I'll move my point of view a little bit. So once again, you can scale on a particular axis. But another cool thing you can do, and I'm just going to undo all of that. There we go. If you go to the details panel, you'll see that the tree, pie, tree pine snow round has been selected. That's this one. You'll see there's also location and rotation numbers here. So if I would like this to instead at the moment it's 1.5, it's normal size. If I want it to be 2, I can just change all the numbers there and it, it multiplies it all by 2 or I could have one of them at 1.5 and the rest at 2. I'm going to undo that because I'm quite happy with the original. Likewise, if you don't want to move things around using these handles, you can also change it by typing in numbers. So that is currently at, uh, what have we got? 9. So if I put it at 11, it moves it that little bit that way. I'll just undo that again. That's back to where it was. So you can zoom out using the mouse wheel. And if I go function and the up key, it gives me, I can look higher on the scene. So the first thing for you to do is change the scene around to how you want it to be. And what you're setting up is the finished scene. So don't worry about moving things and putting them in the wrong location. Just get it how you want it to be when the game is finished. And before I let you go do that, one other trick I will show you is in this... Uh, outline of view, there is a um, an object called player start. There it is there. If you want to reset the view to what it will look like for the player, you right click on this and go snap view to object. So that's what the game will look like at the moment. Uh, another thing is you can actually search in the world outliner. So if you don't want to have to scroll through all these lots of actors that are in here you can just type player and it will pop up here and once again right click snap view to object will take you back to this view it's important to be able to do that because you want to see what your game looks like when you press play and of course at any time you can press play and it will show you uh, exactly how your game will look and if i was zoomed in in some weird view if i press play it takes me back to where that player start is it also means that if you don't like the view that you're seeing when you start the game, you can actually move the player start actor um, somewhere else. So if I zoom out, there is the player start actor here. So I could potentially move it another way. And when I press play, the point of view has changed. Now I want it back to where I had it. So I'm going to press undo. over there and then let me just check that that's how I want it yep that's exactly how I want it uh, another thing you'll notice is it says lighting needs to be rebuilt to build your lighting you just can go build build lighting only takes a little while 
but that will actually get your scene looking a little bit better. But if you don't build your lighting, everything that we're going to do will still work. All right, so I will stop this video here. I will let you tweak your scene as to how you want it to look when the uh, game is finished. So I will let you do that now and I'll see you in the next video.